Let's take a look at example three. Example three, um, the position of a particle is moving along a coordinate axis that is given, it's given by this position function. We need to find the velocity. The velocity is just the derivative of the position function. And that's just gonna be 3t squared minus 18t plus 24. And when we look at part B, they, um, they ask what time is the particle at rest and or what times. So what we need to do is we need to unpack what it means for the particle to be at rest. What does it mean for the particle to be at rest? Does anyone want to tell me? How do you know when a particle is at rest? Someone just messaged me zero, and I agree with zero. But what zero? Is it the position is zero? Is it the velocity is zero? Is it the acceleration is zero? Ah, I think the position being at zero means you're at the starting position, but it doesn't say anything about movement. So when I see the words at rest, I think object is not moving. So we're not talking about where it is, we're talking about its movement. So that means we're actually gonna look at the velocity. So this means the velocity is equal to zero. Does that make sense? So we're gonna take our velocity function, which we just calculated and set it equal to zero. And the first thing I wanna do is I wanna pull out a common factor. So I'll pull out a three, it's gonna be t squared minus six t plus eight. And then I wanna factor that even further. So I know that I'm gonna have two factors because it's a quadratic polynomial inside the parentheses there. I know the first term of each factor needs to be t. I know that because this part here is negative and this part here is positive, I'm not gonna have two negative numbers multiplied together because a negative times a negative is gonna give me a positive. And I need to factor eight into two pieces so that when I add the outside and the inside together, I'm gonna to get negative six. And I feel like if I just put a two here and a four here, that would work. Because um, negative, because the outside is negative 4t and the inside is negative 2t. Negative 4t plus negative 2t is negative, negative 6t. And from this, I can see that I have two times where this guy is equal to zero, t equal to two seconds, and t equal to four. Is there any questions about that, my friends? All right. So um, <clears throat> we want to know on what time intervals is the particle moving from left to right or from right to left. So again, each of these things involve moving, movement, and it involves direction. So we need to look at velocity. And what we're gonna do is we are will um, we're gonna create a little number line over here. I'm gonna label those two points. So this one point here is um, well we we're really trying to map the the position over here. So um, what I'm gonna do is I'm first gonna just call this axis time. And I'm gonna have my two seconds here and my four seconds over here. And then I'm gonna look at the sign 
of the velocity. So we're not just looking at the velocity, we're looking at the sign of the velocity. So let me move this. So I hope you can see that we have three pieces, one piece here, one piece here, one piece here. These two points are when the object's at rest. So those are the points where the velocity might change sign. And I'm gonna look at the sign of the factors. On each piece. Okay, so the three is always positive and then you got a sign here and you got a sign here. So this guy's always positive, but I wanna know what's the sign of each of these two pieces. And I'm looking at this factor right here. So maybe I should, um, maybe I should write those in. So my velocity is given by um, T minus two and a T minus four here. And then I'm asking myself, is it plus or minus? Is it plus or minus? And I'm not even gonna write the sign of the three because the three is always positive. And that's not gonna affect anything. So I want you to imagine that we're, we're right here on this side. If you need to plug in a number, you can plug in a number like zero. So when I plug in a number less than two, this guy is gonna be negative. And this guy is also going to be negative. So it's like I have a negative and a negative. Well, a negative times the negative is going to give you a positive. Okay. Does that make sense to everybody? Now I want to pick a point or think about numbers in between two and four. So you can imagine you pick three or something. If I put a three here, Three minus two, that's a positive number. But three minus four is a negative number. So a positive times a negative is gonna give you a negative. Right. And then for the last part right here, I wanna pick a number bigger than four. Like just imagine pick five, you plug in a five here, that's positive. You plug in a five here, it's positive. So this is positive times positive. Positive times positive gives you a positive. Oops. So the positive direction is from left to right. The negative direction is from right to left. So we're gonna write like this. It's left to right from zero to two union four to infinity. Does that make sense to everybody? And it's right to left when we have the negative, the velocity is negative. So that's gonna be from two to four. Is there any questions about this? Anyone have any questions? No questions. Okay. Um, I have a question for you. Why did I start at zero? How come I don't have negative numbers? Is it because they said time is greater than or equal to zero? Ah, oh, Sharon, you're right. That's right. Perfect. I was waiting for someone to ask me so I could explain. Um, but no one did, maybe because you already knew. So now what we want to do is we want to use um, the information obtained 
to sketch a path of the, of the particle along a coordinate axis. So when I drew this coordinate axis up here, this coordinate axis was time, but that's not what I'm gonna plot for part D. So for part D, I wanna plot its position, okay? So I'm gonna draw a little number line. And this is gonna represent its position, not time, but position. And what's the starting position of this object? What's the starting position? What do you think? Well, the starting position is not gonna be zero, but it's gonna be the position when the time is equal to zero. So if I calculated what S of zero was, and you look at our original function right here, zero minus zero plus zero plus four, that's gonna give you a four. So I feel like your starting position is gonna be four. That's where your object is starting. I think we should plot a couple of other points where do you think the other two points I should plot are? What times are important times for us besides the starting time? Any thoughts? Two and four, I agree. So, I'm sorry, I can't keep scrolling. So let me just do it up here. So if I wanna calculate what S of two is, S of two is gonna give me eight minus, um, 36 plus um, 48 plus four. What is that position? That's gonna give us uh, let me whip out my calculator so I don't have to use my brain. Oh, battery's low. Will they let me do it? Eight minus 36 plus 48 plus four. Oops, typed that wrong. Eight minus 36 plus 48 plus four. Four. Okay. So let me move that down to our problem. So we've got to come over here. This is a sketch, right? So we'll put 24 over here. Maybe I should wait to see what the third point we want is. So now let's plug in the other one. Um, we want S of four. So S of four is going to be equal to four cubed minus nine times 16 plus 24 times four plus four. So let's figure that out. That's gonna be four to the third power minus nine times 16 plus 24 times four plus four. I totally entered that wrong. Three minus nine times 16 plus 24 times four plus four. You get 20. Okay. So let's take that guy and that's, that's a 20, sorry. So let's put a 20 like maybe here. All right, I think we're ready to do this. Let me pause here for a second. Does anyone have any questions so far? 
I want you to remember this is position, it's not time, right? Like these two lines look the same, but they're totally different. Okay, let's do this. For some reason, I want to do it in green. So we're starting at a place of four. I keep going. Two seconds later, I'm at 24. At this point, the object is momentarily at rest, and then it changes direction. Then it hits 20. Oops. And at 20 seconds, it changes direction again. So the motion of our object kind of looks like this. So it starts off in the positive left to right direction. At the two second mark, it turns around and goes backwards. For, and then at the 20 second, and then um, at the four second mark, it turns around again and it goes back in a forward direction. Okay. So sort of one of the ideas, I guess, with this guy is when you throw an object into the air, like you can imagine the object kind of comes up, it almost hangs in the air for a split second, and then it starts to come down again. So when it hangs in the air for that split second, that's when the velocity is equal to zero, and it starts to come down. Is there any questions about this, my friends? All right. 